the mighty promise of the Father. The mighty promise of the Father is what we have been promised by God. What is that mighty promise of the Father? It's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the mighty promise of the Father. We have received a mighty promise from our God. Praise the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 1 verses 4. The Bible says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, said he, ye have heard of me. This is Jesus speaking. He says to his disciples one day in, uh, in Luke chapter 24, he said to them, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Praise Jesus. Amen. Now Jesus is saying one, that when they were assembled together, he commanded them not to depart from this is Luke, quoting the ones of Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 24. And he says one day, they were, they were gathered and Jesus said to them, wait in Jerusalem. What happened? Jesus was arrested. Jesus was crucified. Jesus was uh, died of course he was brought to the tomb and when he was in the tomb he stayed there for three days and uh, three days after he resurrected with glory and after that resurrection of jesus the bible says for 40 days he appeared he appeared he appeared those are appearances to peter appearances to mary magdalene appearances to cleopas appearances to 500 men all at once he appeared, he appeared for 40 days. And then when he was, after 40 days, he was to be taken up. And before he went to heaven, he said to them, Pare ye in Jerusalem, until you are endued with power from on high. And the Bible says, 10 days later, Acts chapter 2, they were all together, and the Holy Spirit came. 50 days from the resurrection of Christ, Penta, Pentecost, Fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Penta means 50. After 50 days, they were all together gathered in one place and the Holy Spirit came. Now, the Bible says, Jesus said, wait for the gift of the Father. The mighty promise of the Father, which he prophet promised you. Where is this prophet, prof, promise of the Father? The promise of the Father is in Joel chapter 2, verses 28. That is the gift of the Father. In Joel chapter 2, verses 28, this is now Joel prophesying. This is now a prophecy which became the promise of the Father. The gift of the Father. If you wicked fathers know how to give good gifts to your children, to your sons, to your daughters, how much more will the Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit? How much more? He will give you the Holy Spirit. Just like you ask for your father and he gives you a bread and he does not give you a stone and he gives you a, a fish instead of a serpent. That is exactly the same way that your father in heaven is faithful to give you the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when you ask, well, to them that ask. So you must ask for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now, this is a prophecy of Joel, the gift of the Father in chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. So if all flesh means all flesh, all. Doesn't matter your tribe, doesn't matter your color. Oh, praise God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And your sons and daughters, Wow, shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. This is a gift of the Father. And he said, one day the Holy Spirit shall be poured. Not the given, poured. God promised to pour His Spirit. In one edition, Holy Spirit akakua poured on people. When the Holy Spirit is poured on people, have you seen the way Majina uh, Mogikanga from a waterfall? The 14 falls. The 14 falls in Dika. The way they pour water down there. That is how God.
God promised to pour in spirit. That's how the Holy Spirit needs to be poured upon our lives. Amen. Yes, it's not a, it's not something like it's heavy, it's massive, it's mighty, and we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. It shall be poured upon us. Our sons shall prophesy, our old men shall see dreams, your young men shall see visions. And upon the servants and upon the head, those are those are house girls. Those are servants that work for us. Those are the, the, the servants that clean our cars and our clothes and our cook for us. The Bible says that day, they also shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a mighty promise of the Father. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And those days, I will pour out my spirit upon those, those hard means also verses 30. And I will show wonders. Now, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of wonders. Amen. I will show wonders in the heavens. In the heavens. In the and in the earth and fire and pillars of smoke. That is what happened in Pentecost. Fire and pillars of smoke and fire. Everybody had a frame of fire. Praise the name of Jesus. Today you have a frame, you have a frame, you have a frame, I have a frame. Only that I admire your frame because I can see your frame. I can't see my frame. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Even when we look at churches and ministries and you know we admire their frames. Why do you admire somebody's frame? It's because you cannot see your frame. Each one of us has a frame. They were all in one place in the upper room, 120. All of them were filled. So there were 120 frames. But when you look, how many frames do you see? When you looked, if you were there that day, if you looked, how many frames do you see? 119. You forget to see yours. But those of us who are looking are also looking 190, they forget theirs. That's the mystery of the Holy Spirit. You cannot see 120 frames. You can't. You will see 119. And you cannot be able to see yours. Your neighbor will see mine. My neighbor will see mine so that you don't be proud. Yes, there is no competition. Each one of us here has a frame. A frame. A frame. Work out your grief. Work out your frame. Let it, let it shine. Much, much greater. Amen. amen, amen, amen. So that is a gift. Now, Acts chapter 2, verses 14, Peter speaking says, but Peter standing up with the eleven. Now, Peter begins to preach. He wants to preach. Lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Or you're going to say more But he was, they were not drunk. These people were not drunk. Praise God. Amen. I want us to see the, the actual experience of the mighty promise of the Father now in Acts chapter 2. Let's see how it was. We have seen Jesus has told them to wait in Jerusalem until they are with, endured with the power of all high until that promise of the Father comes upon them. John has prophesied and said, it shall come to pass after one that the Holy Spirit shall be poured upon all the flesh. And then we have seen Peter also saying uh, that this is not drunkenness. It is that which was spoken about, prophesied about by prophet Joel that I will pour out my spirit upon every flesh. Now, how is this experience on this day? Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it is a day that was Really wait, we were waiting for. They were waiting for the gift. They were waiting for the promise. They were waiting. They were, they were in one place. Ten days after the, 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 the command of Christ to wait. Now the day has come. They were all with one accord. In agreement. Holy Spirit comes in agreement. They were in one place. They were not scattered. They were in one place. It is not easy for people who are not in the same atmosphere of the Holy Spirit to be filled with the mighty promise of the Father. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Suddenly there was a mighty sound. We cannot receive the Holy Spirit in silence. We receive the Holy Spirit in a mighty way. It's a sound. You can hear the sound. The sound of the Spirit from heaven, like a mush, rushing, mighty weed. The Holy Spirit comes like a mighty, rushing weed. So this is not something you can pretend you have not received. 
This is not something you can pretend you have not had. This is something, not something you can pretend you have not seen it. This is something evident. This is something visible. This is something you can touch. It's something you can hear. It's a sound. It's a weed that grows and it fills the house where they were sitting. The power of God, the promise of the Father filled the house where they were sitting. And there you are. They are appeared upon them, cloven pans like of pans of fire, and they sat upon each of them. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. That is the fire, the fire that we need. The, the fire to overcome inner giants and the outer giants is the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fire came upon them, praise the name of Jesus. And it is that upon each one of them. Each one of them received a fire that day. A fire, a cloven, a pan. Each one of us shall receive. This is my actual experience that day. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with the other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And we are going to see that this is going to be the routine. This is the the way things will be done. This is the, the way things shall happen from now henceforth. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will begin to speak. This is a procedure. Praise God. Amen. First of all, you get born again, you are, you are saved. When you get born again, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit if you are not born again. If you are born again, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit because those who are in the upper room, those are the ones that have believed in Jesus Christ yeah. as Lord and Savior. Those are there are 120. Peter is among them. Magdalene, all the apostles are there, uh, uh, except this one called Judas who had uh, committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So when you are saved, now the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Yeah. You ask for God to give you the promise, the mighty promise of the Father. When He comes upon you, you begin to speak. It is not possible. Yes. It is not possible for you to be quiet when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's not wow. possible. Those people in church who are very, very quiet because they don't have the Holy Spirit. This is not spirituality. People think that quietness is spirituality. It is not true. In fact, even when we are doing prayers and deliverance, we are more, more disturbed by silent demons. Silent demons are the worst, even when we are doing Deliverance. But those that are aggressive and, uh, and uh, shouting and screaming and doing manifestations, that one tells us something has happened. There is an activity going on. But the one that falls down and is quiet there is a silent demon and is a very dangerous one. You need to put a lot of fire and a lot of Holy Spirit upon that person. Now, I can go to the Holy Spirit without a meruka and a meruka go find a video because Holy Spirit cannot come upon you in silence. It is not possible. Holy Spirit comes upon you in power. And when power he comes as a devil, you touch live wire. Where is the Google's live wire to know the whole of God's mama? I tell me, Mama, even on a people shock. If you have the metro now, push on the number. There's the same way. The Holy Spirit will come upon you in power. That the power cannot come upon you. You are standing just a very comfortable and you're looking at your watch and they're chatting. It is not possible. You cannot chat on WhatsApp and expect that the Holy Spirit is coming upon you. It is not. Praise God. Amen. This is how things are going to happen from now henceforth. The way you see here, the whole of the book of Acts, it shall be like that. It has got another review. He laid his hands upon them, they received the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues. I was speaking to one lady in Australia and she told me, I have never received. I am I am an old woman now over I think over sixty years. And since I was born, I have never spoken in tongues. Wow. I don't know how you will speak in tongues now. I opened the video. When it comes to that, I want to see you. Yeah, I want to see the way you are reacting. And then I began to pray for her. I was not in Australia. I was just here, around here. This man you are seeing here is not a joke. Don't joke. He has the fight. So I prayed, I prayed, and I opened it. I am looking at her. The way the power of God is coming upon her. And slowly, slowly by slowly, it begins to be masked by the power of God. Begins to, 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 to close her eyes. Begins to shake. And all of a sudden, her mouth speaks. She starts speaking. 
Yeah, I open, I close mine and we start listening to her, what she is saying. And she begins to speak with tongues wow. for the first time in over 60 years. Oh my God. 60 years. Right. When the Holy Spirit comes, you will begin to speak. You, you don't speak. You begin to speak. What does that mean? You have not been speaking before. Now you begin to speak. Is that what the Bible says? Yes. The Holy Spirit. And begin to speak. You begin to speak. What do, you, what do you begin to speak? You begin to speak differently from what you are saying before. Amen. The Holy Spirit cannot allow you to speak about defeat, about impossibilities. The Holy Spirit cannot allow you to say, I will die. One day in the house, I go, I'm come on, listen, listen, we are blessed. The Holy Spirit came upon me and I said, we are blessed. Yeah, we were praying at night very, and I thought, we are blessed. God has placed his anointing on us. I will preach in the nations. I begin to prophesy to myself. Begin to prophesy, begin to prophesy, begin to prophesy. And then in the following morning, we receive a call. That is very, very important. Very important. It is the Holy Spirit that comes upon you and you begin to speak differently. You begin different. You speak different. Peter was in the upper room. They were talking about Jews. They were speaking about who they are defeated. They were talking and they're speaking and they're saying, Oh, huh? what now has happened? Why have we lost our Lord, our lover, our, our, our Savior? Why did they kill him? Oh, I don't know what do you do. What do I do? Can I go back to fishing? That's what he was talking. That's what he was saying. I had John and I said, After me, I had fallen this man. I thought he was going to be our deliverer. How? And he told us he was so anointed and so powerful. Uh, me, I thought if anybody comes near him, he will be electrocuted and he die. How come he was arrested? How come he was beaten? I don't understand. That is the language of people without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the language of the people without the Holy Spirit is how they were defeated. Is how they lost the battle. Is how they lost the tender. Is how they lost the relationship. Is how they lost the job. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, begin to speak. Differently, Amen. we shall begin to speak differently. Amen. We shall speak differently from the fall. Yeah, yes, we will not say we are defeated. We will not say that in this government we are useless. No, even if we say in this government we are useless, you are wasting your time because he is not coming out tomorrow. This man is there, this government is there for five years. So we better pray for this man, we better pray for him. Praise God. So let's begin to speak. To speak, to speak differently. And the Bible says, how do you do what were they speaking? They began to speak in tongues. In tongues. Yeah. This is the greatest weapon of the believers. Children of God are the greatest weapon of speaking in tongues. When we speak in tongues, the devil does not understand what we are saying. We talk. We speak in a language that goes directly to the throne of grace. He is able to understand your vernacular, he is able to understand your English and your Portuguese. And your are... Try. Try. Spanish and all of that. But he does not understand the language of the Spirit. The devil does not understand the language of the Spirit. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. So if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are minus one weapon. You may have the weapon, the Bible, you may have the weapon, fellowship, you may have the weapon of the name of Jesus, but you are minus the greatest, the mighty promise of the Father. You are minus. And something is wrong. We need to ask God to fill us with the Spirit. And there was, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. There were people there in Jerusalem. These are not the people, the only people here. These actually, uh, when you want to happen, like in Bibi and Sema, there were other people that wrote in Jerusalem in verses 5, devout men, those are good men of God, out of every nation under the heaven, now verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man had them speak in his own language. This is now tongues, speaking in tongues. Yeah, this is tongues. We, we, we have the tongues of God and the tongues of angels and the tongues of men. Now, here, they are speaking in tongues of men. <laughs> tongues of men. Tongues of men means there were people here, like maybe 
there were people who could hear Peter speaking in Portuguese as he was speaking. The tongues were Rikuta Kina, and it was tongues of Portuguese. And we will see how many people are there. Oh, you want us to read? Yes. So that we can know who are there. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. These are all tongues of men. That they are speaking now. Where am I? Verses what? Every, every man had them speak in his own language. Verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these people uh, which speak Galileans? Are these not men from Galilee? That is uh, ja Acts chapter 2, verse 7. Acts chapter 2, verse 7. And they were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? How here we are, every man in our own town, wherein we were born. How come we are hearing ourselves where we were born? <laughs> it's now like uh, those people are from Central, and then the Holy Spirit comes upon them, and they begin to speak in Luo. Ridoka, again, And those who are from Western begin to speak in Kimeru. And those who are in Meru begin to speak Kikamba. And those who are in Kikamba, they begin to speak in Kikuyu Ire Tipi Ayatarwa. How come we are hearing ourselves from this? Are these not men of Galilean? Are these not Galileans? How come we are hearing ourselves in them? Because of tongues of men. Praise God. But you are not taught, that's not your mother tongue. It is a tongue that has come upon you so that you can communicate to the people that are listening to you right now. What do you think they were saying? Praise God. Amen. What do you think Peter was saying to, uh, to the men who are not there? He was speaking in, a, in a maybe in Spanish or in Portuguese or in German. And he was telling Germans, your time of deliverance has come. That is, I think that is what Peter was saying in their language, so that they can hear Peter speaking to them direct. I think Mary Magdalene was speaking in uh, Asian, the full Tamil Nadu language. Oh. And was there speaking to them and saying, uh, uh, telling them, oh, you men from India, come to Christ. He is here today. He must, she must have been calling them to Christ through tongues. Wonders of God. That's exactly what I'm saying. He was speaking wonders. Of God. He is a mighty God. He is great. He is resurrected. That is what they were saying. And then, why am I hearing my language, my mother tongue in them, and they are not in, from our language? This is the wonders of the tongues. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And so they were ministering to them. 120 of them must have been speaking 120 languages. That were penetrating. And remember this day, what was happening this day? There was the feast of the Pentecost. So there were millions and millions and millions of people from everywhere, all over the world. They were meeting in Jerusalem for the feast of Pentecost. The feast of harvest. Praise God. Amen. So many of them were there. Look at uh, verses 8. And how here we, every man in our own language. Look at this. Parthians. Men. Men's. Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus, those are the languages they were speaking. Asia. They were speaking in, in those languages. And Asia, you see yourself somewhere there. And Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt. Are you not there in Egypt in Africa? Yeah. And in the parts of Libya. Oh, you think it is a Libya in Israel? This is very So there were people from Africa that were in Jerusalem that day of Pentecost, from Egypt and from Arabia. <laughs> About Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. How come? So Africans were well represented that day on the day of Pentecost. Wow. Yeah, Arabians were there, Egyptians were there, Kenyans were there. If the king and Jadi or the king in Tanzania were married, then the lad be rokush. It was it must have been there because Kenya means the harp of God. Kenya, yeah, the harp of Yahweh, the house of Yahweh. So the house of Yahweh must have been represented that day in the the Pentecost. The Pentecost. Praise God. They were amazed in verse twelve. 
verses 10, Chris and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. We are hearing them speaking. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you cannot say, I have a generational curse. Oh, I am cursed. I think I am dying next month. No, that is not the wonders of God. Wonders of God is I will make it. Amen. I will preach. Amen. I will extend my wings to Africa. Amen. Africa shall be saved. Amen. Asia shall be saved. God is great. He loves you all. Amen. This week I was preaching to a Muslim. I was telling him, God loves you. I become a veteran of Bibiaco. God loves you because he was telling me about how the, how the wife has run away. And I took him out of the wife and they brought him to Jesus. Those are the good news. The good news are Jesus. And I'm believing one of his days is coming to Christ. Amen. Because there is a trace I left him. I preached to him Jesus and spoke the wonderful works of God. I told him, do you know that Jesus loves you? Not God. Not, not God. When you are God, I told him, Jesus Christ loves you. Huh? Okay, we must speak the word of works of God. Amen. What are the works of God? God has done it. If we were not like this, He has done it. We were not like this. We were, He has done it. I did not have a wife. He gave me a wife. I did not have this. He gave me. I did not have this. He gave me. I did not have this. He gave me. These are the wonderful works of Christ. Amen. God has done us so well. He has done me well. I cannot afford to complain. Those are the words they were speaking about, and they were amazed by the twelve and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? This is a wonder. What does this mean? How come we are hearing ourselves in them? Praise God. It's like now, like now when you, you, you go to preach in Congo and you begin to speak their language, you don't need English, and now you begin to speak their language and they are translating. You don't even need the translator, you begin to speak in their language. They will be shot and they will see the mighty works of God. And they ask, Why you born here? No, I was not born in here. Praise God. Muzungu na injeka nisani and answer kukusitia kia unasema. Unasa kungea luka yako wako e kapadokia. Nona yu kapadokia yako wako. Pamphalia, Fijia, Pontas, yeah. Mesopotamia, Medes, Pathias. These are the languages we need to speak, the languages of the Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. After smoking them, said, These men are full of wine. So, full of wine was a mockery. It was not, it was not a part of what was promised. So they mocked them, saying, You are drunk. Today they don't say we are drunk, they say, You are mad. You are mad. This man is mad. Yeah, this man is mad. Yeah. Don't worry, it's a mockery. They are mocking you. It is not the truth. It is a mockery. Yeah, they were not drunk. And Peter stands up to, 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 to negate the statement immediately. He says we are not drunk. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, you must attack. You must return the bullet on the same, 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 same minute. Yeah, when they say you are drunk, return the bullet immediately. And say, men standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea. And all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, hearken unto my word. For these are not drunken as you supposing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken to Prophet Joel. He begins to explain what men shall, uh, or, and on my servants and my handmaids, I will follow my spirit upon the and I will show wonders. Yoyote Anasema, verses 30, the sun shall be darkened. Now, you will need to see that in uh, Joel, he saw. Two things at the same time. He saw the Holy Spirit coming, and he also saw the second coming of Christ. So as you read from chapter 20, chapter 2, verses 28 down there, you will see one promise is a promise of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The second is the, the promise of Christ Amen. coming. Two at the same time. Now, you distinguish what one, which one you want. Right now, we want the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Amen. And he spoke very powerfully, it shall come to pass. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. No, we shall hear these words, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that man approved of God with signs, miracles, and wonders. That is verse 22, which God did to him of the midst of you, you yourselves also know. Amen. It is time for the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is time for the Holy Spirit. Amen. They were all born again. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And 3,000 of them came to 
Christ that day, they were added to the number. Now Peter is not alone anymore. He has a big gathering of 3,000. Just from 100 to 3,000. They were few, they were fearful, they were afraid, they were in, in one place, they were close, they were in the upper room like this one. But when the Holy Spirit came, I believe they went down there, or wherever they were, the uses of the prophet to preach to masses, and 3,000 of them came to Christ that day. They were added to that number. And God was saying, making a statement. I lost 3,000 in the desert of Moses. Now I am gaining 3,000 in Jerusalem. I am getting the same thing I lost. Whatever you lost in God, you shall find it in the name of Jesus. Whatever you lost in God, you shall find it in the name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the mighty promise of the Holy Spirit. It is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost week. The day the Holy Spirit came upon them on a Sunday morning. We pray for the Holy Spirit to fill each one of us. Be filled. Receive the Holy Spirit now. Receive the Holy Spirit now. Speak in other tongues. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands and be filled with the Holy Spirit. May He come upon you like a mighty rushing weed. May He come and blow over you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is the mighty promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit he is spoken to about us in the Bible. And we have read about him. We receive him today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give him a praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus! Yes, you believe it! Oh, Jesus!